with the notion that peak oil may be upon us and the supposition that energy prices will just continue to rise one of my winter projects this year was to install and test a solar hot water heater. This little building right here next to the water heater is my summer shower. I'm going to step back a little bit. And it's basically just a little 8x8 platform with some scrap metal on the roof and the walls and located here in the back is a conventional LP propane water heater and years ago when I built this shower uh, I decided to use LP to heat hot water because it's much more efficient than electricity the problem with LP gas is that uh, it is a derivative of oil and its prices tend to fluctuate uh, in lockstep with oil not all the time but um, most of the time it does so the idea was to try to further minimize the impact uh, that relying on fossil fuels has on my yearly economy and budget. This unit uh, has a 55 gallon tank mounted on that uh, metal stand and there are 20 evacuated glass collector tubes and these tubes are like thermos bottles um, there's an outer layer uh, that you see outside which is transparent and then there's an inner tube uh, that has a uh, absorption material uh, deposited on it and I'm really not sure what that material is uh, but the idea is that uh, the energy from the Sun passes through the clear layer uh, in between the two tubes it's actually evacuated uh, there's nothing in there um, so there's a vacuum kinda like a thermos bottle same concept and then the inner tube with that um, coating deposit on it absorbs that solar energy Now, what you can't see real clearly uh, you can kinda see it on this one here uh, you can see a, a copper tube and that copper tube actually contains uh, some type of solvent. Uh, I believe it might be acetone, but I'll have to do a little more reading on that. Um, that tube extends all the way down inside uh, that evacuated glass tube. And on the top of this copper tube, uh, there is a bulb that has been sweated on there, soldered on there. And the idea is that um, as the inner glass tube collects that heat it's transferred via you can kind of see it here uh, there are actually aluminum uh, heat sinks or fins that are also uh, down the entire length of the tube and the copper tube sits in between uh, those heat fins to help transfer the heat from that inner glass tube to the copper pipe and the idea is that as that heat is collected it causes the solvent like substance uh, to boil and as it boils it rises up in the copper tube is transferred into that bulb that you can't see because it sits inside the heater right now um, the thermal energy is transferred into the water contained in the tank which cools down that uh, solvent material and as it cools it condenses and it drops down to the bottom of the tube again 
So basically, uh, the the uh, the there's kind of like a little heat pump action going on inside these tubes. There are 20 of these tubes. Uh, like I said, there's uh, about 55 gallons of water contained inside this tank. Over here, this is a uh, high pressure system, which means that uh, it is capable of uh, withstanding the pressure of a standard uh, household water system. And I've got a deep well installed on the property, and um, it's probably uh, operating at some place around 50 to 55 psi. So in essence what happens is, and this is a little bit of a Rube Goldberg plumbing proposition, um, because I need to be able to drain the system because it does freeze in this part of the world and in particular this winter it has got off to a very cold start. We've had uh, a lot of nights where it's got down below freezing so you need the ability to, because of the way it's plumbed, um, my feed line and return line, you can see you're just lying on the ground here. Um, so you need the ability to drain the system every evening uh, so you don't get water lines that are freezing up. And this operates on the same basic principle as a uh, standard electric or gas type water heater. Uh, cold water comes into the bottom of the tank. Uh, it's heavy. Um, the solar energy is collected and transferred into the water via that process that I described earlier. And then as the water heats, it becomes more buoyant, moves to the top of the tank, and it is, um, when the system is put into operation, water is drawn out of the top of the tank, and then it goes to the fixtures in the summer shower. You can see right now, uh, I hope you can see it, that uh, the temperature gauge on the output of the system is sitting someplace right around 128 degrees. Now this is after I've taken a long uh, shower this morning and um, the system has been in operation for probably uh, two weeks now. We've had some very cold nights as I mentioned earlier and it does seem capable of providing enough hot water to at least take one good long shower um, every day. Um, now whether or not you could run uh, a shower uh, multiple times through the day, uh, I don't know. But so far it is enough for one good long hot shower. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable that the system um, will have a relatively short payback time uh, because, uh, as I stated uh, earlier, we have had some very cold weather. It has been unseasonably cold this year. So, my intention is to run this system uh, for a few more months, uh, get satisfied with the idea that it will indeed be able to operate on its own and supply sufficient amounts of hot water for the summer shower and if it does uh, I'm convinced there's a, there's a short enough payback time that I'll go ahead and put together another system to actually run uh, the water needs for the house and the canning shed. Based on this limited amount of testing that I've done uh, I'm satisfied that uh, once the weather warms up a little bit and uh, the days get a little longer that this system will be able to provide uh, enough hot water uh, in the warmer months and in the months where the days are longer. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that, that it will provide enough hot water for multiple showers uh, in, in the warmer weather and the longer days. The cost of this system um, including shipping was about $1,200. Uh, based on my current gas prices in this area and my typical consumption, kind of a back of the envelope calculation uh, puts this at a payback of probably someplace around four years, maybe a little longer. 
and that assumes gas prices where they are now. Now you can do the calculations uh, yourself um, if you're trying to figure out what it costs you to heat hot water. Um, the, I think the rule of thumb is uh, if you're using electricity to heat your hot water, the rule of thumb is that 35% uh, of your uh, energy consumption uh, can be attributed to heating water for your household. And of course that will change a little bit depending on how many heads you have in your house and how inclined they are to take a, a 30 minute shower. But uh, rule of thumb, uh, figure 35 percent of your electric bill if you're heating with electricity. And uh, if you look at your power bill, uh, I think most of them actually state the cost per kilowatt hour. So that gives you some idea of uh, what the payback time would be for you. Uh, installation was very simple. Um, no unusual tools or skills are needed to assemble the unit. Uh, just a little bit of time and patience. Uh, the instructions are not very good, uh, but it is um, once once you do start putting it together, uh, it becomes pretty obvious how where all the pieces go. Uh, well, the, one other thing I want to mention about this particular unit is that it's actually got a built-in heating element, which you can see is not connected. Uh, this is a 1500 watt element. Um, this is a super insulated um, uh, tank. There's actually an inner tank made of stainless steel. This outer tank is made of aluminum, I believe. And the idea is that on the if you have a sustained period of cloudy days, um, you can actually turn on this heating element and run it for a while to uh, heat the water up. And there's no electricity out this far uh, on the property. So this is strictly, uh, it's going to be uh, heating hot water out here is going to be dependent strictly on sunshine. Um, the system is plumbed so that I have the option of uh, using these valves, and there's a few of them. Um, but the system is plumb, so I have the option of completely turning off the output of this gas hot water heater. Um, I can use it in combination with the solar heater, uh, or I can use strictly water from the solar tank. And as I said, uh, a couple of weeks of testing has, uh, has got me comfortable with the idea that this unit does indeed have enough capacity um, to heat hot water to run the uh, the uh, summer shower out here even in the winter time. Any questions feel free to send them on. I'll do what I can to answer them. Um, I think it's a safe assumption to say that uh, energy prices uh, will probably not be um, making any big moves to the downside in, in the years to come. And the payback on some of this technology now is becoming very attractive. Um, and what I failed to mention earlier was that the payback period does not include any type of tax incentives which are available in North Carolina. And I believe there may be a federal program still in place uh, as well. So um, the payback time on that unit may actually be uh, shorter than my back of the envelope calculation. I think uh, for the most part uh, it's still relatively, uh, I'm trying to shield the mic a little bit here, I think it's still a relatively obscure uh, technology. Um, most folks um, are sticking with what they've got. I don't think it's really uh, it's really in the forefront of uh, a lot of people uh, people's thoughts right now. But um, I'm sure it will move into the forefront if we do see a dramatic spike in energy prices in the future. So that's a quick overview of the uh, solar project this winter. And as the uh, months progress, I'll uh, post some additional videos on any other energy-saving technologies that I decide to adopt 
in the upcoming months.